In Unity, it's possible to save and recall the state of an audio mixer asset using snapshots. In this audio mixer, Master Mixer, we have two snapshots created. In this case, unpaused and paused. In unpaused, we've set our levels and we've also set the cutoff frequency of a low pass filter, in this case, to 22,000 Hertz. When we click on the paused snapshot, we'll see that a new cutoff frequency has been recalled, 365 Hertz. In this case, it's attenuating the high frequencies of our music track, which is running through the music group of Master Mixer. When the escape key is pressed, the music track will be low pass filtered. Let's check that out. When we press escape, our music track is low pass filtered. And when we press again, to create a new snapshot, we can click the plus button in the snapshots area. Now we have a copy of unpaused and we can set our values. And now we can recall those values in the editor by clicking on the snapshot names. At runtime, we can recall snapshot values using the transition to function. Transition to takes a float in seconds and allows us to interpolate between one snapshot and another. Transition to is called from the audio mixer snapshot that we're transitioning to. In this project, we've got a game object called Menu Canvas. Menu Canvas has a script called Pause Manager. Let's take a look at Pause Manager in MonoDevelop. In Pause Manager, we've added the namespace declarations using UnityEngine.UI and using UnityEngine.Audio. We're also checking to see if we're currently using the Unity Editor, and if so, we'll include the Unity Editor namespace. Inside our class, we've declared two public variables of the audio mixer snapshot type called paused and unpaused. We've also declared a variable of the type canvas called canvas. In our start function, we're getting a reference to our canvas component using get component. In update, we're checking to see if the escape key has been pressed. If it has, we'll flip the enabled state of canvas to enabled if it's disabled or disabled if it's enabled. We'll also call the pause function. In pause, we're going to check to see if time.timescale is equal to zero. And if it's not, we're going to set it to zero. If it is, we'll set it to one. Next, we're going to call the low pass function. The low pass function also checks to see if time.timescale is equal to zero. And if it is, it will call the transition to function from the paused snapshot. We're going to pass in the floating point parameter time to reach, which in this case is 0.01 seconds. If time.timescale is not equal to zero, we're going to call transition to from the unpaused snapshot, also passing in that same. 0.01 second parameter for the time to make the transition. We have a public function called quit, which is going to check if we're using the Unity editor. And if we are, it's going to set editor application dot is playing to false, meaning it's going to stop playing our scene. If we're not using the editor, meaning this is a build of our game, we're going to call application dot quit, meaning we're going to quit the application out to the desktop. In the Unity editor, we've assigned the paused and the unpaused snapshots to the audio mixer snapshots that we created in Master Mixer here. If we want to change these, we can do so using the Asset Picker. When transitioning between snapshots, the default interpolation curve is linear. We can change that by selecting a parameter right-clicking on it, and choosing one of these override transition types. The smooth step snapshot transition type will give us an S-shaped transition curve. Squared will give us a parabolic curve. 
square root will give us a square root curve. Brick wall start will immediately transition to the stored value being transitioned to at the beginning of the transition. Brick wall end will wait until the transition time has elapsed and then make a hard transition to the stored value. In addition to using transition to, it's also possible to transition to an interpolated blend of multiple snapshots using the transition to snapshots function. The transition to snapshots function takes three parameters. The first, an array of audio mixer snapshots, allows us to choose which snapshots we want to create a blend between. The second parameter is an array of floats. It allows us to specify the weighting of each element in the resulting blend. The third parameter is a float in seconds, which allows us to specify the time to reach the new desired blend. Transition to snapshots is called from the audio mixer that contains the snapshots that we're transitioning between. What we've got here is we've set up three cube triggers. When our player collides with each one of these, it will transition to a blend of two snapshots. Each of the snapshots has been set up in our sound effects sub mixer. The sound effects sub mixer is running into the sound effects group of our master mixer. I've turned down the music for this example. In the sound effects mixer on the gunshots group, we've added a send effect. This is under add send. And what this will do is send a copy of the signal from gunshots to the receive effect that we've added to reverb return. The receive effect will pass its signal to our SFX reverb effect, which will cause our gunshots to sound like they're happening in a reverberant space. We've set up two snapshots. One with no reverb, in which the send level for our gunshot send effect is turned all the way down. The next is heavy reverb, where it's turned all the way up, and we can just listen to how those sound. Edit in play mode. Click, we can hear no reverb. We'll select heavy reverb. I've intentionally put a very strong, unrealistic reverb on there so that we can hear the effect clearly. Now, we've created these three transparent cubes called Reverb Trigger 1, 2, and 3. Each of them has a copy of the script Reverb Trigger on it. Reverb Trigger is a simple script which contains a public variable for our reverb control script and a public integer called trigger number. When the player collides with the trigger that this is attached to, it's going to call the blend snapshot function of reverb control, which takes an integer trigger number. In Unity, we've assigned the reverb control variable by dragging and dropping our audio mixer control object, which has that script attached to it. We've also assigned unique trigger numbers to each of these trigger objects. On our audio mixer control game object, we have our reverb control script. In our reverb control script, we have the namespace declaration using unityengine.audio. This allows us to access members of unityengine.audio like the audio mixer and audio mixer snapshot classes. We've declared a public variable of the audio mixer type called mixer and also an array of audio mixer snapshots called snapshots. We've also declared a public array of floats called weights, and we're gonna use these to specify the weightings of each of the snapshots as we blend between our different snapshot states. We have a public function called blend snapshot, which takes a parameter of the type int called trigger number. This is the int that we're getting from our reverb trigger script when the player collides with the collider. We have a switch statement here which takes trigger number and chooses which of the colliders we've collided with, case one, case two, and case three. In each of these cases, we're gonna set the weights of the weight array 
to correspond to the percentage of which snapshot we want to contribute to the blend. In case one, which will be selected if the player triggers the rightmost red trigger collider, we'll set the weights of our weights array to 1.0 and 0. What this will mean is that our resulting snapshot blend, which will be created when we call mixer.transition to snapshots, is a blend which is 100% of the snapshot at 0 in the snapshots array and 0% of the snapshot at 1 in the snapshots array. In case 3, we're doing the opposite thing. In this case, we're going to have 0% of our no reverb snapshot and 100% of our heavy reverb snapshot. But case 2 is where things get interesting and where transition to snapshots becomes really useful. Here, we're creating a third reverb state by transitioning to this blend of 25% of our no reverb snapshot and 75% of our heavy reverb snapshot. So we've created a third reverb state by transitioning to a blend of our two existing snapshots. In Unity, we've assigned the variables of our reverb control script by dragging in our sound effects mixer asset to our mixer variable slot. We've also assigned the snapshots by clicking and selecting them from the list. Here we have our no reverb snapshot, and here we have our heavy reverb snapshot. We've also set the size of our weights array to two so that it will match up to the size of our snapshots array and so that these lists of elements can line up. We haven't initialized the values here because those are going to be set by the script at runtime. As we give this a try, pay attention to the reverb return level on our gunshots track and watch how it changes as our character moves through each of the different triggers. Let's give it a try. So what we've done here is we've used our two snapshots, no reverb and heavy reverb, to create this third blended snapshot represented by the purple collider. And so we've chosen to show reverb here, but this technique is applicable to all sorts of audio states and really any type of mixer state that you can save in a snapshot can be blended and recalled using this same technique.